If you're interested in English etymology or pre-Christian Germanic pagan traditions, chances are that you know that English's names for weekdays are named after certain gods. Tuesday comes from Tu, Wednesday comes from Woden, Thursday from Thunor, and Friday from Frigga. These gods are probably better known through their Norse variants, Tyr, Odin, Thor, and Frigg. This leads a lot of people to assume that these days were important for the worship of these specific gods in the pagan tradition. After all, why call it Thor's day unless it had some relationship to Thor? And of course, Saturday is named after Saturn, who's not a Germanic god, but a Roman one. And then you have Sunday and Monday, but the Germanic peoples didn't worship the sun and the moon. Well, Caesar says they did, but he probably got this from Gallic propaganda. So clearly there's got to be something else going on here. Let me ask you something. What is a week? No, really, what is it? Yeah, it's a period of seven days, but why? Why seven? A day is a fairly natural way of measuring time. It's based on, you know, a cycle that everyone experiences and pretty much every culture around the world understands the concept of a day. A year is similar. It's pretty obvious, especially in parts of the world which have very prominent seasons. A month is also pretty obvious. It's based roughly on the cycles of the moon. But what about a week? There's nothing in nature that says that seven days is a natural way of calculating time. So where did it come from? Well, the first mention of a seven-day cycle comes from the ancient Sumerians and Babylonians, who had certain rituals that took place over a period of seven days or every seven days. This likely comes from the fact that in ancient Mesopotamian culture, the number seven was quite important. We don't know exactly why, but it might have had something to do with the seven planets. And put a pin in that because we're coming back to that later. What we can be fairly sure about is that the Israelites, with their seven days of creation in the book of Genesis, probably got it from Mesopotamia. And this wouldn't be completely unheard of because they got plenty of other things from further east, including probably most famously the story of Noah, which is based on the story of Utnapishtim. And in fact, the story of Utnapishtim has plenty of things revolving around seven days. Like, for example, in some versions of the story, the storm that causes the flood lasts for seven days. But the seven-day week wasn't universal across the board. First of all, there's plenty of cultures who didn't have any sort of week and didn't organize themselves according to a regular short cycle like that. But even those who did didn't necessarily choose the number seven. The Romans, for example, in the Republican period had an eight-day cycle called the Nundinum, which means nine days. And if that sounds confusing, it's because the Romans calculated their dates inclusively so that the first day of one Nundinum was the ninth day of the last one. So nine days for what we would call eight. This is also why Jesus, who was crucified on the Friday and is said to have resurrected on the Sunday, is said to have come back three days later because early Christians using the Roman way of calculating dates included the Friday in those three days. The Roman first slash ninth day was called the Nundinae, and this was traditionally a market day and a day for other things like this was traditionally the day that Roman men would shave, for example. Eventually though, a seven day week would creep into the Roman world from two separate directions. Firstly, there was through Greek influence. In the Hellenistic period, astronomy and astrology grew in prominence in the Greek world. Ancient astrology was complex and it could govern absolutely anything in one's life and central to it were the seven planets. Ding, there's that pin. The ancients didn't know about Uranus and Neptune and Pluto and other things that we might call celestial bodies within our solar system. To them, there were only seven planets, which from closest to furthest were the moon, Mercury, Venus, the sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Beyond these were the fixed stars, that is what we would call stars, the ones that don't move around in the sky the same way as the planets do. Beyond this, according to the astronomer Ptolemy, was the prima mobile, or first mover, which was likely inspired by the Aristotelian concept of the unmoved mover. This was a sphere that was said to move the stars, which in turn moved the planets, and all of this movement would trickle down into Earth and would ultimately cause all motion on Earth. This, by the way, was the theory behind astrology. 
I once told a colleague of mine that astrology only really makes sense in a geocentric universe, and, well, she wasn't really keen on that. In any case, eventually astrologers determined that each of the planets had an influence over the hours throughout the day, which would go into a recurring cycle of seven, and this ultimately meant that the first hour of each day was also governed by one of the planets in, a, again, a cycle of seven days. And the pattern went like this, the Sun, the Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. Eventually, Hellenistic culture became more and more influential in Rome, and over time, the seven-day planetary cycle began to be used alongside the eight-day Nundial one. Over time, the Nundinal cycle began to fall out of favor, but the real triumph of the seven-day week came with the Emperor Constantine's promotion of Christianity, which is the second direction I mentioned earlier. Christianity, coming out of Judaism, used the seven-day Israelite week, based around the Sabbath, which happened to fall on the day of Saturn in the planetary cycle, that is, Saturday. Since Christian tradition held it that Jesus was crucified just before the Sabbath, that is, on Friday, and that he was resurrected three days later on the Sunday, Constantine eventually issued that the Dies Solis would be a holiday to be celebrated across the empire, and the tradition stuck. This also likely helped him with his connection between Jesus and his other patron, Sol Invictus, or the Unconquerable Sun. Ultimately, this made the seven-day week a permanent fixture in Roman society, and it strengthened its position in Christianity. Even to this day, most languages based on Latin continue to use these traditional names in their weeks, although some of them replace Saturday with the Sabbath and Sunday with the Lord's Day. For example, in French, you have lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, but for Saturday, you have samedi, based on dies sabbatum, and for Sunday, you have dimanche, based on dies dominicus. Okay, so this explains where Saturday, Sunday, and Monday got their names. They're just literally direct translations of the Latin names into English. But what's this have to do with Thor and his worship? Well, as I'm sure most of you know already, the names of the planets in the Roman tradition are named after Roman gods. And although in the Middle Ages and the liturgical calendars, the days of the week were just given numbers, with Sunday being day one and Saturday being day seven, these planet god names still remained prominent into the Christian empire. Now, it was very common for Romans to analogize the gods of other people they encountered to their own, and this included Germanic ones. At least since the time of Tacitus's Germania in the early 2nd century CE, various Germanic gods have been referred to using Roman names. Eventually, it became standard for Odin to be connected to Mercury, probably due to mutual connections to death and the afterlife, Frigg to Venus, likely because of connections to love, and Thor to Jupiter, because of their relationship to thunder. Tyr was connected to Mars, but the reason for this is a little obscure. A lot of people assume it's because Tyr was a war god, but actually the main reason people assume Tyr was a war god is because of the connection that he has with Mars. There's nothing really that makes him particularly warlike in Germanic traditions as far as we're aware. What I feel is more likely is that Mars was often connected to Roman politics and voting assemblies, especially the Comitia Centuriata, which was a voting committee based along military class, traditionally anyway. Tyr, on his end, was thought to be connected to the Germanic thing, or council. In fact, the German word for Tuesday is Dienstag, which actually gets its name from the word thing rather than Tyr's name. I personally find this more convincing than the war god argument, although, of course, it could have been none of these. It could have been some obscure connection now lost to time. Roman analogies were rarely one-to-one, -one, and oftentimes their connections was kind of like trying to put a square peg into a triangle-shaped hole. All of this is to say, although I'm sure you figured it out by now, that the days of the week are translations from Latin into English, which also translate the names of the Roman gods into the equivalent Germanic god. The exception to this is Saturday, presumably because there wasn't really an analogous god to Saturn in the Germanic tradition. Whether this replaced a previous cycle is unknown, and probably unknowable. Like I said, not all cultural traditions have had an equivalent to a week, so it's possible that they didn't have anything before then. But then the question arises, did Germanic pagans start using Thursday as a day for worshipping Thor once 
they adopted the seven day week and likewise Wednesday for Odin and etc. It's pretty unlikely. Although it is possible that Germanic peoples adopted this seven day week early on, what's more likely is that they only adopted it with conversion to Christianity. The translation of weekdays into a Germanic version probably started with the conversion of the Anglo-Saxons, when Pope Gregory the Great encouraged missionaries to transform local traditions and use them as tools for conversion, rather than completely uprooting them, which might create resistance. He famously recommended that pagan temples be blessed and converted into churches, and that pagan festivals be redirected towards Christ and the saints. A great example of this is the fact that the English word Easter gets its name from a pagan festival called Eostre, at least according to the monk Bede. Whereas in most other languages, it has a name related to Pasha or Passover, like for example in French, Pauk. What probably happened is that missionaries chose to translate the weekdays into Old English in order for it to have more meaning to the pagan Anglo-Saxons who are newly converted, for whom the Roman week had little to no meaning at all. Then this practice would have been continued by missionaries in other Germanic lands, namely figures like St. Boniface, who was an 8th century English missionary who's often called the Apostle to the Germans. And he got this name for his role in converting several Germanic peoples on the fringes of the Frankish kingdom and beyond, although many of them were likely already Christians and he probably just brought them more into a conformity with Roman practice. But part of that Roman practice was liturgical holidays and celebrations which were all based around the seven-day week. You have things like Sunday Mass, Holy Week, Advent, etc. As well as things like the Divine Office where clergy would recite all of the Psalms throughout the week. And it was mainly English and German missionaries who converted the Scandinavians up north, and they probably brought this naming convention with them. So, in conclusion, was Thor worshipped on Thursday? Probably not. Although it is possible that Germanic peoples adopted the seven-day week early on, there is absolutely no evidence for this. And even if they did, there's no guarantee that they would have associated Thursday with Thor beyond simply the name. There's no evidence that they would have had, there's no reason why they would have had to make festivals dedicated to Thor on that day. But I find it altogether unlikely that they would have adopted the seven-day week in the first place, because before Christianity, it was mostly associated with astrology, and Germanic peoples don't really seem to have had any interest in astrology at the time. Of course, this is all in reference to historical paganism. If you're a neo-pagan and you want to worship Thor on Thursday, you can go right ahead. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Traditions changed and evolved all the time. Old ones fell out of favor and new ones replaced them. So who says Thor can't be worshipped on Thursday? It's up to you. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.